hey guys welcome back to my channel my name is Ino in today's video we'll look at how we can turn a Kali Linux into a web server now we'll be using Apache 2 services to run the web server and we'll need to make sure that the services are enabled and running uh, before we can check the status of the services let's open a browser and try and see what we get if we try to go to the local host which should be the local machine here. So if you do local host, you're not getting anything. You're not being presented with anything here. And if we use the loopback as well, 127.0.0.1, which is also for the local host, you're not getting anything. And now, like I said, we need to ensure that the Apache services are running. And to check the status, we can use a system CTL status Apache 2. And as you can see here, it says that it's inactive and it's disabled. Let's go ahead and uh, start the services. We can also enable the services, but in our case, let's just start the services. We'll use a uh, sudo system CTL start Apache 2. Put in the password. Then let's check the status again. And now it's active and running. Let's go back to the web browser and uh, reload this. And we're getting the default page for Apache 2 Debian. It should be the same thing here. We're getting the page. Now, as long as someone has the IP address for this Kali Linux, they can access this page remotely as well. For instance, if we go to a Windows machine and open a browser, and before we do that, we'll need the IP for Kali Linux. Let's check the IP here. Let's do IP address. And the IP is 172.16.1.101. Go back to the Windows PC and do 172.16.1.101. And we are getting that. We are being presented with our uh, page on Kali Linux. Now, what we can do with a uh, web server is we can also serve like uh, files that can be downloaded. And in order for us to do that, what we can do is we'll need to put those files in the default directory for the web server. Now on this Kali Linux machine, that's gonna be under var www uh, HTML. So, we cd to www.html, I believe, and do ls. So you see, we already have this, we have index.html. So that's the default page that we saw when we opened the browser and put in the IP for Kali Linux. So this is this is the file that's serving that. You can actually even view the contents of it. HTML. And this is, the HTML content. So you can even modify it if you know what you're doing and customize it. Now, like I was saying, if you wanted to present a file that can be downloaded, you can put it in here and it can be downloaded from here. So let's go ahead and create a file and then see how somebody can access that file. So let's go ahead and create a file here and then we'll see how we can access that file. So we'll say touch, let's do sudo touch test file. Let's call it my test file. And uh, let's, uh, we have a file called my test file. Now, if you wanted, if you wanted to add content, content to it, you can say sudo vim test, sudo vim my test file. Say, uh, Save file. We can cut my test file, and we have content inside the file. Now that we have that file, let's see how we can access that file remotely from another computer. If we come here, now we'll need to add forward slash here, and then we'll say my test file and you're able to see the contents of that file from the Windows machine. Now, when it comes to um, 
a Linux machine, what we can do, we can use the wget command to get this file. Now, if I go to a different machine, this is a Ubuntu machine. So on this Ubuntu machine, let's use the wget command, which we can use to download files from a browser using HTTP. So wget HTTP colon forward slash forward slash. We need the IP for Kali 172.16.1.101. Then forward slash my test. And it connected to Kali Linux. It connected to Kali Linux on port 80. And you can see 100% we were able to download the file. We can do ls. And there is the file, my test file. And here we can do ls. We can do my test file to view the contents. And that's it for this video. This was just a quick video to show you how you can turn your Kali Linux machine into a web server, which, like I said, allows us to serve web pages and also allows us to share files which can be downloaded using a browser or using a, uh, a terminal using the wget command. So I hope this information has been helpful. I'll catch you in my next video. Thanks. Bye.